Hello everyone, this is the latest video of the series of Docker and SQL and in this video we finally will do some SQL. One thing I did to prepare for this video is I took this taxizone lookup file, which is I think from here. We already looked at this file. I downloaded this file and I put this to our Postgres. So in our Postgres we have this in a table called zones. We already have all the zones. We can take a look at them actually. So we see these are all the zones like Newark Airport, some zones in Brooklyn, Queens, Manhattan, and so on. So we have all the zones already in the database. And in this video, I want to do a short review of SQL, of the basics, things that we actually will use in this course. For example, in the analytics engineering week, when we will talk about DBT, we'll do some of these queries. So just to refresh it for you, we'll do some of these queries right now. I want to start with a joint query. We have our trip, uh, taxi trips uh, data set and we have zones data set. And remember, uh, let me quickly select this yellow taxi trips. I also add limit 100 here. So we see only the first 100 rows. So here we have pickup time, drop off time and things like this. And we also have pick up location ID and drop out location ID. Now what we want to do now is we want to do a join with the location table and we want to display the actual name of the district of uh, the location instead of seeing the numbers. There are multiple ways uh, that we can do this. So first way is we can just do from yellow taxi trips uh, T. So this one is alias for the table. Then we can add a comma and add another table and another table. It will be trips and then location pickup and I will call it location pickup and location drop off, location drop off. So now we will select the data from all these three tables and I will also need to add a where statement here, where close, saying that I am only interested in showing only records where these IDs actually match. So I need to say where T PU, I need to put this in quotes, PU location ID. And the reason I need to put it in quotes is because it's, um, you know, capital. PU location ID equals to LPU, don't remember, it's, uh, yeah, location ID. And then I'll do the same, but uh, instead of PU, I'll have DU location ID. And I don't need this end anymore. And let me run it. Yeah, so here it's actually not correct to write uh, like that. So it's zones. So in both cases it's zones, but for one zone is for pickup. I'll call it zone pickup and zone drop off. And then here zone pickup, zone drop off. And let me run it. It's drop off location ID. Okay, and now we have this information here. So we have this uh, location ID, zone and so on. Yeah, but it, now it's kind of difficult to see which is which. So what we will do now, instead of doing select star, we will select only some things that we need. So for example, we will select pickup time. We will select drop off time. We will select, say the total amount and then we will select the district and zone for dropout. So we will have something like zone pickup. We'll select a district and zone for pickup and district and zone for drop off. So we'll have something like zone pickup borrow. Then uh, I think it's like that concatenation in Postgres. Let me try with plus and then I'll rewrite it if it doesn't work. And then it's uh, zone pickup borrow and zone pickup just zone so, and then we have an alias here is uh, pickup location and then we will do the same for drop off drop off drop off is drop off location now let's see if it actually works yeah, it doesn't like this uh, operator i think in postgres cut string postgres um, yeah we need to use this concat function Okay, now it works. So we see here pickup location, we see drop off location. This is one way of doing joins. This way we select 
all the records, these are all possible combinations of records from this table with records with this table and this table, and then we limit them uh, the records we see uh, using this where statement. So we only want to see records where these IDs are matching. So this is one way of doing join. And this is actually called inner join. There is always a match between this ID and this ID. And for records for which there are no match, we don't see them. We can write this differently. We can write the same statement using join uh, uh, operator. We can say we want to select from yellow taxi trips T join zones. And then we write on. And then in this on, we write on which condition we want to join. The join condition will be this one. So this gives us one table and then we want to join this table with another table join again with this table and now this time we want to use this condition now we don't need a where statement anymore let me just run it to see if it works yeah it does work i don't think there is any difference in performance between these two i think they are equivalent actually i don't know if we have any records for which we don't have any pick up or drop off location uh, let me create a new a new tab here so i want to select pick up location id and drop off location id from this yellow taxi tips table and let me just take a look at them I want to see if there are maybe some things that are empty here. Let me add a where close where pick application ID is no. So it seems there are none, no locations like that. Maybe drop off location. Now it also seems there are none. And we can also check if there are any IDs that are not present in the trips database. For that we can use not in operator. What I want to do is I want to check if there are any pickup drop off locations in this table that are not present in the zones table. Maybe there are some IDs that we don't have information about. For that I will use a query like that. So I want to see if drop off location not in and then we specify what kind of database we, where we want to look in. So then it will be another statement. So for that we will use a select location ID from zones. I think it should look like that. And we see that there are no such cases and I think probably the same happens with pickup locations. And yeah, apparently our data set is uh, good in the sense that all the records have pick up and drop off locations and all these IDs that we have in the yellow taxi trips table, they are present in this zones table. So this is good on one hand. On the other hand, I also wanted to show you inner and outer joints. These are cases when sometimes, uh, let's say, we don't have information about some IDs in another table. What I can do right now is I can just delete something from this table and then see what happens let me just select the first 100 rows and then yeah for example this location 142 i will go now and um, remove it so it's 142 this one manhattan lincoln square east so we can delete it let me create another tab delete from zones where location id equals this one okay so now we deleted one record now if we execute the same statement we should actually get yeah you see this 142 is always returned it's because this uh, pick application no longer exists in our zones uh, data set and now what happens in this case for this lincoln uh, square east if i execute that query you see this Lincoln square east disappeared. And the reason for that is because we do a usual join. It only returns records for which both IDs, IDs in both table are present. And in our case, in zones, uh, this record no longer is there. So that's why it doesn't show here. Ideally, we want to show something like now here, meaning that, okay, we have an ID, but there is no record associated with this ID. Let's still show it, but we will say that the location is unknown. 
For that we use left join. We have two tables that we want to join. Table on the left, which is this one, and then table on the right, which is this one. And left join here means that if there is a record that is present in this left table, but is not present in the right, you still want to show it. That's why it's called left, because we still want to show this uh, record. And we just do left join, both joins become left joins. And you see here, yeah, it tries to concatenate it. That's why we have this weird thing here. I don't want to complicate this query because uh, then I would need to add a case statement showing that if it's no, then write unknown. Otherwise, uh, do this thing. I hope you get an idea. And yeah, that's actually the same thing happens with the drop off. There is a thing called right join, which is similar, except if there is a record that is present here, but the record is not present here, then for the left part of the table, we will have none or null, but for the right, we will have something. And then there is a thing called outer join. It's like a combination of left and right. So it will show a record in the left when there are no records in the right. And it will also show a record in the left the other way around, basically. This is all I wanted to cover regarding joins. You will see these queries more in week four, uh, when we talk about analytics, engineering, and dbt. I wanted to show you one more query, group by query. Group by is when we group by a certain column, and then we calculate some aggregates based on that. So for example, let's uh, take a look at the number of trips per each day. We will count the drop of day as, as the day. First, let me remove the join. For that, we can use a date trunk date trunk function and then we can say we want to select a day from this from this column and yeah so what happens is it just uh, removes the time and leaves only the day so we have the day only or another option could be we can cast this as a date and then it will do the same thing except now it will cast this to a date type so it will keep on the date. Let's go with this option. I don't need this thing. So this will be as day. Yeah, just for testing, let's execute it. Yeah, it works. And then what I want to do is just count how many records are there. And we need to add a group by statement saying that we want to group by this thing. So we don't need to limit anymore. So let's execute that. And now it shows per each day, it shows how many records we have in our database. It's not ordered, so you see the order is quite arbitrary. It would be nice if we have them in chronological order. For that we can just do order by day, and then we can say ascending or descending. So ascending is from lowest to highest, and descending is from highest to lowest. Yeah, we see that uh, there are a few outliers, so I don't know why these things are there, but most of the records are in January, from January, like we expect. And we see that, for example, let's say we want to see what is the day with the largest number of records. And we can do that by ordering by count. This one is count. We can order by count and then use a descending order. The first record will be the record with the largest number of trips, which is uh, 28th of January. End of January was pretty busy. And the first uh, of January, yeah, it's the least busy day. And of course, in addition to count, we can see, let's say, what is the maximum number of money that driver made, the total amount. Or we can do different kinds of aggregations here like total amount or maybe the largest trip in terms of numbers of passengers. So let's execute that. But yeah, sometimes we see that uh, people travel in quite large groups, like eight people. So there are days where somebody made more than $1,000 per trip. That's impressive. Perhaps maybe one more thing we can see is how we can group by multiple fields, for example, we can also group by a district. Let's take drop-off location ID. And then what we can also do, instead of typing the whole thing here, and then the whole thing, uh, this whole thing, we can just do group by one and two, referring to this thing and this thing. Yeah, let me execute that. Yeah, it's uh, capital. Output of this query will be probably large. 
now instead of ordering by count let's maybe order first by day ascending and then yeah also let's order by this location maybe also from lowest to highest yeah now we have these results we can see for each district for each drop off location how many trips were there how much money the driver made and what was the maximal number of passengers and of course we can add more and more stuff there yeah so this is how group by works and i think a uh, Group by is like a workhorse of on all analytics. So this is how the majority of queries that analysts write look like. Usually it's some sort of uh, some form of group by, and then there are often joins. And I think these two types of queries uh, that um, they are most important to know. I think we covered sufficient uh, ground for you to continue this series of videos. We started with uh, discussing Docker and ended with practicing and uh, refreshing SQL. And we also took a look at the data set we will be using throughout the course. Yeah, we wrote also a script for ingesting data from a CSV file to a Postgres database. So I hope you enjoyed it and see you soon next week. Goodbye.